into the environment right now. Aluminum oxide nanoparticles and barium nanoparticles, these just happen to be the same materials that they use in nanothermate explosives. And so when this stuff settles down out of the air into the environment, it is small enough to be absorbed through the root structure of the trees and the forest. And so when there's a forest fire, and there will be a forest fire, those fires burn dramatically hotter. The point is that the, the, the cost of firefighting, the cost in the, in the healthcare system have nearly doubled in the last 10 years. The amount of acreage is lost because of fires. The impact on the human health is dramatic. I personally tested uh, water and aluminum and I found aluminum had 47 times the normal expected amounts. Uh, strontium had 10 to 20 times the amounts. Barium was 20 times. This is what the stuff looks like here. Who is doing all this? From my research, I concluded that these people like the US military, the Pentagon, international governments, rogue nations, and global corporations. And there's one name that I want to give you to research for yourself, and that is DynCorp. DynCorp is a um, semi-military organization, has also ties with um, air, uh, commercial airlines, and they have patents on vaccines. So interesting. Well, who? Well, this darling, Mr. Brzezinski, Obama's teacher, he said in 1970, technology will make available to the leaders of major nations techniques for conducting secret warfare, of which only a bare minimum of the security forces need be appraised. Hmm. In fact, I think they have only to warn one official that's it. And that official can keep his mouth shut so nobody knows. We don't know. We don't hear about it. And techniques of weather modifications could be employed to produce prolonged periods of drought or storm. Yes. This is the document that was mentioned earlier also. And the interesting thing is it was written in 1996. And it was uh, created because in that period there was, for the first time, computer power to compute huge plans that you want to make. So with these same Cray computers with Oracle 8i software, they uh, reverse engineered the 1918 flu virus, which is very similar to the H1N1. And also they had this document with six different scenarios, plans, what do we do here in 1996 to have this or that outcome in 2025. And in one of the six scenarios, um
with me because I know this is very dire news. This whole program is about reality because we don't have any reality from so many other sources, none. So it's necessary to to take in the full scope of reality for to have any chance of changing it. I'll get to what we can each do at the end of this program. Bear with me. A new headline from Forbes magazine, the Great Barrier Reef is in its, quote, final terminal stage. This is from Forbes. The Great Barrier Reef is perhaps on its final deathbed as it suffers from back-to-back -back massive dying events in the past two years. Australia's Great Barrier Reef is one of the great natural wonders of the world. Largest living organism in the world, by the way, or was. A tremendous display of beauty, biodiversity, and fragile ecosystems. Now the reef faces mass destruction as a result of warming seas. That's absolutely the case. That's what's killing the coral. And, and this is most important and typically not mentioned from official sources, the reefs are being scorched with massive UV radiation. What's the single greatest cause of the destroyed ozone layer causing that UV radiation? Climate engineering. Not the only source of damage. CFCs, absolutely a problem. Other forms of anthropogenic activity and pollution a problem. Climate engineering, the biggest problem. No mention of climate engineering from any mainstream source, which must be included if these reports are to be fully credible. And while the planet plummets into full-blown meltdown, the pursuit of more fuel for industrialized society continues. Think of the absurdity of this. Our planet is completely imploding, and the only thing military industrialized society can do is to try to find more resources to further expand its insanity. Now we have, here's a headline. This should make Americans happy, and Donald Trump's make America great again. Saudis now fully own America's biggest oil refinery. S Saudi Aramco has become 100% owner, 100% of Port Arthur, an oil refinery in Texas. Port Arthur has a capacity of 600,000 barrels per day, making it the biggest in North America. Saudis have also acquired 24 distribution terminals. The Saudi firm, this is Aramco, also got exclusive right to sell shell branded gasoline and diesel in Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, goes on and on. D.C., eastern half of Texas, and the majority of Florida. Does anyone even question how the Saudis get away with everything? How the Saudis get put on the Human Rights Council while they're bombing the poorest country in the world, Yemen? Mercilessly bombing civilians supported by the U.S. and the U.K.? How the Saudi Arabians are put on the, the Women's Rights Council now as well as the Human Rights Council? And that countries, Western European countries and the U.S. won't disclose the fact that they voted for this to happen? Saudi Arabia, who had all their citizens flown back after 9-11, no questions asked. Doesn't anybody question this? This is the source of oil. It all comes back down to the sources of energy, does it not? The book House of Bush, House of Saud, elaborating on the absolute marriage between the U.S. power structure and the oil in Saudi Arabia. Why is any of this particular radio frequency transmissions affecting the cloud formations and we have staggering photos of this and they'll explain this away for example meteorologists on the weather channel I, I i don't know how they look themselves in the mirror or their children in the eyes but they will explain this away as some sort of natural phenomenon when clearly our sense of reason should tell us it's not so the particulates in the atmosphere are manipulated with radio frequency transmissions and the goal again back to the why on solar radiation management to expand available moisture into the widest cloud canopy possible. And although that deflects some of the sun's incoming thermal radiation, it also traps it, it shreds the ozone layer, it disrupts the, disrupts the hydrological cycle, and it renders toxic every single breath we take. More cloud formations, again, especially if you look at some blocked out areas where there's 90 degree corners blocked out of cloud cover, that's from radio frequency transmission, you can't get that kind of configuration naturally. Meteorologically speaking, you don't need to know much about meteorology to recognize that. Square cloud cut into stripes on the top, these are all completely unnatural phenomena. Radio frequency transmitters, Every, we know that a lot of people are fighting the far frequency from phone transmissions, correct? And that's certainly a problem. But the transmissions from some of the weather control on the cell towers, the next red towers that all of you see in town and cities and so on.